Hi and welcome to our blog. I am Jim Cuervo, Senior Instructor here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's topic is how to prepare and import a Revit model into 3D Max for use with the Arnold Render Engine. Let's be clear that the preparation steps in Revit, then input and organization of said model in 3D Max can in fact be used for any render engine other than Arnold. This block topic is set up to teach us, teach us an efficient way of importing a Revit model into 3D Max for better organization and ease of use. Are you all ready? Let's begin. As you can see, this is a little complicated model from which we only want one area that has been prepared as a small plan, but it is not a 3D view. So we need to convert the 3D view so it matches the small plan. For this, we use the orient to view command in Revit. Side note, for more info on how to use orient to view, please see our blog, orient to view in Revit. This is our 3D view, and the only part that I really want to port over to 3D Max is not the whole model, but just this part right here on the second floor. So, in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is to create a blow up uh, plan, which is this section right here, which just isolates just the parts that we want to take with us. Then we go over to 3D view, and in the 3D view we will invoke the orient to view by right click on the view of uh, navigational cube, coming over here to orient to view, it is a floor plan, and the one we're looking for is this level 3 copy, which is the one we just saw. Once we select it, it will automatically orient everything and isolate just that section. Now in this particular case, these are all of the pieces of geometry that are in part of that section. We've already gone ahead and ported out most of this geometry with the exception of the furniture and we have it on a separate view called cropped 3D view to save some time. Once this is done and we isolate just the parts that we want through the visibility graphics here by going in and just turning on the furniture. Then I go ahead and save it and I am ready then to receive this in 3D Studio Max. Here in 3D Max we will go to the file link manager and input geometry just saved in Revit. So we go to the utilities panel, file link manager, in the file link ma manager we go to file and we go and search out the specific file that we need which is this one right here and we open it I input my geometry consistently using group mat by materials this just makes it a lot easier to work on the geometry and material assignments and that is done this way once we're here Okay, and we've already selected all of the items that we want to select, or rather the part. We select the view that we want to bring in, which is the cropped 3D view. Say OK. Once all of that is done, we said that when we actually combine this, we use the combine my material right here, which is already assigned right here. So now that that's done, we say attach this file. gives it a couple of moments for the file to come in. Once it's all done, we can go ahead and close out this dialog box. Now that we have all of our geometry imported into our 3D Studio Max scene, what we'll do for now, we'll transfer over to a top view, okay, and we will collect everything and anything that is having to do with the furniture, so we can then organize it in layers. And let's see how that's done first to select all of the objects well we know that this is one of them okay we have to put it into select crossing Very well and we'll go ahead and do that okay there's some uh, there's some um, lights here that need to be removed with the alt key okay we have this piece here and that piece there and there is a further 
mattress here okay so now it seems like we've got all of our items selected let's go to the layer uh, item which is right here toggle layer explorer okay here's our layer explorer as you can see the items are selected that we want we'll go ahead and say right click here oops sorry with them selected we'll say add a layer or if you have a furniture layer already made you can import it so we'll just go ahead and add layer here and we'll call this one furniture and click oh it doesn't let me because there's a previous layer here that is already furniture in case you need to move items from one layer to the next all you really have to do is select them and with the uh, control key okay and then just kind of slide them over now they're in my uh, furniture layer if you want to remove a layer you can always select it and delete it okay like that so now we have our furniture layer with all of the pieces that we want now the reason we've actually done this is for the ease of controlling what geometry is visible to you right now so by using these controls here which is the on and off toggle or the current toggle which is the one with the little um, aqua or magenta or cyan rather uh, little layers here that's the one that is current okay so this is the current one this means that they're all on if you want to turn one of the layers off you just hit the little eye there and you turn the whole layer off or any part of the layer they're in okay so this is one of the major reasons why I like to bring everything in in s pieces of geometry that then I can go ahead and manipulate and control and I also actually load everything in by material because this way all of my materials are a lot easier to assign and I don't miss anything that is already been assigned due to group by a material very well once that's done we'll go ahead and close this one and we'll move back to our camera now I only want this camera here which is one that I uh, actually created previously it's a physical camera this cameras here are actually coming from uh, Revit as you see views 3d I can get rid of that and I can get rid of this one for no confusion so okay I leave everything else as is now with those cameras deleted we can now type the letter C look for our physical camera which is right there and say okay to that so now we're in the car in the room using the camera that we had placed earlier next thing we need to do is we need to define everything that is glass to be opaque using the Arnold render properties so we'll select anything that is glass right there all of those items are glass and what we'll do then is we'll go into the modify layer here and we'll look for the Arnold properties and in the Arnold properties we'll go ahead over here to generate general properties and we'll come down to gener general and we will deselect opaque the reason why you need to do this is because everything by default in Arnold render is opaque so if you want items not to be opaque but translucent you really need to come into Arnold properties and remove that particular property okay to test it just select each one of them and make sure that the property is set to on just like it is now and at this point we're ready to place our very first Arnold light so for the light placement we will go back to the top view then we will come over here to create lights we will come over here to the light selector type and we'll go to the Arnold type lights select the Arnold light and the very first light that I like to create is a distant or sky dome light rather which is this one right here and that one I can place really anywhere right and let's go back to our camera and let's begin to set up our render environment 
Okay, so then we go to rendering, environment. As you can see, because we're using the Arnold render engine, there's a couple of things that have been uh, created for us by default. Physical sun and sky environments, for example, because of the dome light that we're using. We also have the uh, automatic exposure control already set up. All we need to do is just input some numbers that are going to work well for us. To start and to find a good point for me to start to uh, manipulate my render engine as far as exposure is concerned, what I do is usually I start with a negative 5 value in the uh, environmental uh, values or exposure value, sorry. So I put in a negative 5 and then hit the enter key and that gives me a sample that is telling me, okay, that's going to be a, a little bit less light happening. Yes, things are being transparent. Maybe negative 5 is a little bit too low, so we'll go ahead and switch it to maybe negative 8. Uh, that looks pretty good, considering that we're going to be using some interior artificial lighting, and so we'll close this. Once we have all of that set up and we see that our, our test render, or, or rather our little sample from the rendering environment is looking pretty darn good, we can then come over here to our render setup. Okay, we're not going to manipulate anything. We're just, this is our very first render from uh, Arnold, and we want to see how good it really is. So we leave everything as is, just for the t uh, uh, sake of time. In the Arnold render, I'm not going to touch that. It's in later blogs we're going to be looking at this. Okay, and since all of this is set up to what I want for a preliminary type of render, we'll go ahead and render. Now, I am not doing any smokes and mirrors. This is straight out as exactly as it comes out of the software with nothing. As you can tell, it renders pretty darn quick. Your light passes are being thrown in. The light is hitting the interior. We really don't have any true materials that we can start to actually manipulate. We'll be doing that later. That's why you see a lot of uh, uh, reflection, even on the mattress on the bed. As you can tell, this bit of reflection coming off of the uh, of the mullions from the uh, doors and the uh, windows that are happening. As I said, there are no smokes and mirrors in here, just straight out of the box how it's supposed to. I'm just going to give it a couple of moments here to uh, go ahead and see what happens. As you can tell, these are already rendered in here, okay? Yes, I have not set up for the smoothness. I have not refined the render engine, but truthfully speaking, for a very first trial render, this isn't really bad at all. It's actually pretty darn good. Alrighty, we'll just go ahead and let it finish rendering. I know it's taking a little extra, but I just want you to see, without smoke and mirrors, no pausing, how long it really takes for a relatively small image with no tweaking, nothing. It's just straight out of the Revit into the Max, organized a little bit, simple light, and that's it. Okay, I am going to pause it right now, uh, and we will continue in our next blog, which will be touching on materials and lights. I hope you've enjoyed this particular blog on Revit to Max for the Arnold Render Engine series uh, section one or blog one of multiple blogs. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I hope you have a safe day. Thank you.